My name is Torsten Overgaard. I'm a Danish photographer. I travel the world taking photographs and teaching photography. The Leica TL is a new camera and it's actually called the TL2. And I will make a point that it's a new camera, even that when you look at this video in three or six months, it's not new anymore. But the point with this one is that the Leica TL2 is uh, the new edition of the Leica T. So hang on here. In May 2014, Leica introduced the Leica T. And then later on, they made it into a new edition, Leica TL, and now comes the TL2. And the reason I want to stress that this is a new camera is that uh, I wasn't a big fan of the Leica T when it came out in uh, 2014 because it was very slow starting up. Everything was slow on it. The autofocus was slow and it also had Wi-Fi and the Wi-Fi didn't really work for the first six months or something. So I kind of joked to myself that it's like an iPhone without Wi-Fi. And I'm glad I didn't uh, announce that broadly or write about it because it would be really hard to talk about the TL2 uh, if I uh, had hated so much on that camera. If we go back to 2014, the new thing that Leica did was that they said, okay, let's make a completely new camera from bottom up. Let's do 10, 12 different uh, camera concepts and let's see which one we want to go ahead with. And the one they chose was the Leica T, uh, which is now the TL2. And it's a unibody, so that means it's like one piece of aluminium. Uh, there's nothing, uh, there's not a lot of stuff screwed together or, or assembled. It's just one piece of aluminium where you stuff in all the electronics and stuff. That camera was actually really well received. It had a lot of new design straps and, and everything that was very special for the T. And it has like a whole new concept of just being a touch camera. Uh, and it doesn't, you can see it's so minimalistic. It doesn't really look like a camera if you compare it to uh, just another simple uh, Leica camera, like the Q here, that everybody agrees is so simple and nicely designed. But if you look at those two together, this is so minimalistic, it's uh, almost unbelievable that you can make a camera like that. So that's what they did, and then they realized that this thing has to be rebuilt, it has to be made, so it's actually really fast and high-tech, and that's what they did with the TL2. And I can say now that one thing I would uh, suggest everybody does, uh, if you never tried a like a T or like a TL, uh, you just heard about it, or even if you tried a like a T or TL, as soon as you pick this one up, it's a completely new uh, experience. And I'll touch back on that a little bit later. But it is really totally new camera. It looks a little bit like the, the previous model, but this is actually really a new one. The point with the Leica TL2 is that this is actually a really good camera as it is. And I find it a little bit hard to explain, but uh, I had a funny story. I went to Rome uh, with this camera and my uh, Leica M10 here that I was really proud of. And one of the things I did was that I went to uh, the Vatican. Uh, the American painter, uh, Dick Zimmerman, was there. And the funny thing with Dick Zimmerman is that he was the one who did the Michael Jackson filler cover. So he's been a photographer all his life, but now he does oil painting. So he was there delivering a painting to the Pope. So I took some photos of that, but also uh, he tried this camera and he really liked this camera. And at one point he's sitting and he's looking at me and then he says, so when you have this, the Leica TL2, why do you have the M10? And I'm like, I actually don't know, because what I would do, I wouldn't necessarily take both cameras out. At the same time, I would take out just the TL2 or the M10. And one of the reasons I would do that is that I can actually do anything I want to with the TL2. Um, but the whole concept of the TL2 is so different from this concept, uh, so I can't really explain why would I have both cameras, but uh, you could say the TL2 really works by itself, and of course the M10 also works by itself. So it's not that this one does a lot of stuff that this one doesn't do, or that the M10 does a lot of stuff that the TL2 doesn't do. They kind of can do the same quality and the same things, but the whole concept of operation is just entirely different. And I can't really tell or predict who 
will like to have the M10 or who would like to have the, the TL or even the Q because the, the whole simplicity and the touchscreen and everything of the TL2 seems to apply to some people where it's just like, wow, I really like how this camera works. And, and one of the things I really admire in this is the simplicity of operation. It is really uh, simple to use and now it's uh, extremely fast. I mean, it's, it's, it's so fast you don't even think about the speed because it just works. So that's a really great thing and, and, and I mean the only way to, to get an idea what is this camera is just find one, pick it up and try it. Uh, that will give you a pretty good idea what I'm talking about. So the Leica TL2 is a completely new concept in cameras when it was uh, developed in 2014 and nothing has really changed in this one. Uh, you can really tell from the outside that this is the TL2 and not the TL. The only two things you can tell is that it says TL2 up here instead of TL and it doesn't have the flash. It had, the TL had a built-in flash that it was so tiny nobody really cared to use it so it's gone. And you can say you do have uh, the flash shoe here so if you want to shoot flash you can do that but on the other hand you can go to 50,000 ISO so why would you need a, a flash. So, most of the time you're going to have an EVF on this one. And the new thing about this camera is that you turn it on and then you have the picture here and then as soon as you press here, this is your menu. So you can see it's very simple. I have cut it down to just nine things on my menu. And here I can control ISO white balance and uh, the way I focus and focus point and everything and exposure compensation. And when I want to do anything to this camera, I just press, for example, ISO here, and then I can scroll and say, okay, I'm going to go 12,500 12, ISO, and that's all I have to do. There's no dials, there's no nothing. It's all in here. And one of the cool things about this menu is that I can actually customize it. So I could go down here and say plus, and now I get everything, so I could say Wi-Fi. Now that's going to be part of my uh, small menu up here. But one of the really cool things is I can customize my menu. I can click here and I have the menu here and I can just hold down a symbol and then you see I have a waste bin. I just drag it over to the waste bin and it's gone from my menu. It doesn't mean that it's completely gone because I can scroll down uh, if I say plus down here then I get all the other things that I might want to have in my menu and then I click those and they get added. So the simplicity of it is just like tots and <coughs> The more that we move in or move ahead in time, it makes more and more sense that of course you want to have touch touches. You have it on your phone, you have it on the screen in the airplane, you have it on in the mall when you want to find out where which one, which store is, you just have a touch screen. So this makes totally sense that you make a camera with touch. And apart from that, it has the on and off button. And it has this one, you can do 4K video on it. And then you have the two dials here that's going to be defined by uh, which program or which mode you're using it. So if you see here, I go here and then if I can, right now I'm in automatic, so if I go here and then I say I want to go in uh, manual, now I have it here and now I can have, I have F and shutter speed. So this is, means those wheels up here is now my, e my uh, uh, F stop and my shutter speed. So these two wheels doesn't have any uh, text on them or anything is totally defined by what are you doing in the camera, what are you going to use the wheels for. And that's how simple it is. If we look at the bottom here, I put on a tape. I don't like all the numbers saying that it's approved for kits and stuff like that, so I black that one out. But one of the things that I also really like about this is just a small detail is the battery here. And it works like the, the SL, like the big uh, Leica camera, that you have the battery here and the battery is actually part of the bottom plate of the camera. So you don't have to open up a door and then click out the battery. When you put in the battery, that is also the bottom plate. So there's lots of things in this camera that's really uh, fought through really well. And overall, it's just pure simplicity. And well, uh, there is actually one little door here, and that is the SD card. Uh, and it has so you can plug in uh, mini USB and USB-C. Um, but it's a very, very simple camera and in some ways it's almost maybe the people that like this camera is people who usually use an iPhone but now they want a real camera 
And you can say if you're used to an iPhone and you, you like the way things work, with touchscreen, why wouldn't you get a camera with a touchscreen where the philosophy is just as simple as an iPhone? It's actually simpler than the iPhone these days. But the image quality is like a professional camera. So the image quality of this is going to be the same as, as this. The Leica TL2 is a real camera. And even it operates like an iPhone, it is actually a real camera. It has 24 megapixels. And it has a uh, crop sensor, as we would call it. So it means the sensor is not a full frame sensor. Um, not that you actually uh, notice because you can't really tell on the pictures. There's a little bit funny thing is that the lens here I have on this one is a 35 1.4. But the picture I see is not 35 millimeter, it's a crop picture. So it's almost like a 50 1.4. And I asked Leica, why do you call it 35 when I only see 50? And then they said, well, it's because it is a 35 millimeter. And that's an answer that made me wonder a little bit because does that mean that it could be a 35 millimeter with a bigger sensor or something? Uh, I don't really know. So the short and the sweet is when you shoot with this one, you can get 24 megapixel uh, pictures in uh, really high quality. And by high quality, I mean it's just like the M10 and uh, the Leica SL and the Leica Q. And it's a very interesting thing that Leica have. Basically, all the cameras right now is 24 megapixel. The big uh, Leica SL is a 24 megapixel. The M10 is 24 megapixel. The M240 that came four years ago was 24 megapixels. Uh, the Leica Q is 24 megapixels, and now this one. And in my opinion, that's a really good strategy because I don't want a camera like this with 50 megapixel uh, files because it's just going to slow down my whole workflow with my computer and everything. And 24 megapixels is plenty to create a sharp enough picture with enough definition. Actually, 18 megapixels would be enough, but 24 is, uh, is great. So that is the sensor. The ISO goes from 100 to 50,000 uh, ISO. And I would say that the 50,000 is actually usable in this one. So that's kind of uh, interesting. If you look at the article on my website, you will see some uh, samples I did. I'm not a big fan of high ISO because I don't think that you really need 50,000 ISO. But it's always interesting to see when a camera says it can do 50,000 ISO, can it actually do it? And it can. Uh, the battery here is enough. And by enough, I mean that uh, for normal days shooting, that battery will do fine. If you're going to shoot, uh, a full day and you want to take a lot of pictures, you are some in Rome or some interesting city, uh, you should have an extra battery. If you want to do video, it might be an entirely different story. This one does 4K video. I will say the quality is great and so on, uh, but always when you shoot video, one of the problems you have is stabilization and the sound, there's those two small microphones here, and usually that means that the main sound you get is your own breathing. So. Um, that's something that if you want to do 4K video with this one, you can do it, but then you have to choose a style where maybe you add music after or you put in a tripod or something. That's an entirely different story. It's great that it has it. Uh, and I shot uh, some test movies in uh, Rome and, it, and, and I was actually amazed how well it worked. <laughs> and that's not much technical to say about this camera and that's one of the good things. Uh, there is this thing that you have the SD card here, but this one you can actually shoot without SD card because this one has 32 gigabytes of internal memory. So you can just take the camera out without SD card and then you basically have enough space for quite a lot of pictures. I think it's 600 or 800 pictures you can do on that uh, size of card. Um, you can shoot RAW in it. So RAW is always color and then you have you can shoot JPEG at the same time, and you can set the JPEG to, for example, a muted color, which is, looks really good on this one. You could also set it to black and white JPEG, so you have color and black and white at the same time. Um, the EVF here is something I think you must have, but that doesn't mean that it's true for everybody. I mean, some people would like to just use the camera like this. You look at the screen, and you can even set it so you have touch autofocus. So where you touch is where the focus is, and it takes a picture at the same time. I wouldn't do it like that, so I would always put on uh, the viewfinder here. And then I program this button, so it's not my video, but when I press this one, it goes up to the EVF. And then I want to have a diopter here, so I'm going to adjust for my eyesight. Mine is fine, so it's going to be straight here. And you can see it can scroll up here. So you can shoot like this, 
uh, and the autofocus works really, really fast. You could say that's almost all there is to say about the technical stuff. Um, the interesting thing is, and what also makes this a real camera, is that, yeah, the quality is like this, but you can actually use other Leica lenses. You can use the SL lenses, and if you look at the article on my website, I, I was using the 50 1.4, that's a big lens made for the Leica SL. Uh, you can also put on uh, M lenses here, and then you need an adapter. It is this little baby here. So you put on this one, and there we go, and I can put on, for example, uh, this Noctilux lens that I like a lot. And of course that's going to make it into a 75-90 mm Noctilux or something, that just makes it even more interesting. Um, and then suddenly when you go here and you go manual focus, then when you look at the screen here, then you actually use this wheel suddenly to zoom in so you can actually focus correctly, and then uh, you can shoot a series of that. So you can put on M lenses and that means, in case you don't know, that when you put on M lenses you can put on all Leica lenses from the 1930s till today. So that's a quite a lot of lenses and a lot of uh, historic and very interesting looking lenses. And then I tried just for the fun of it, I said, oh, I also have a uh, Leica M to R adapter, can I put on uh, the R lenses? And I can, because then I go like this and I have a really nice R lens here, this is the 81.4, that's my favorite lens from the, from the R system. And the R system is the one that Leica made, uh, that was the SLR system, first with film and then they made a diesel back. And at one point they said, okay, we're not going to do the R system anymore. And then a few years, years later they came out with the SL system that is kind of like the new SLR system but without a mirror and a whole new series of lenses. But there's still a lot of these old R lenses around and they're really uh, awesome, a lot of them. And you see now it's stacked up with quite a few uh, adapters, but it does actually work. Uh, again, with manual focus, uh, so I'll turn it on, turn it to the screen here and then I can zoom in and see that's where my focus is and then I can take some shots with that. So it's quite amazing flexibility on a camera that almost reminds you of an iPhone, but it is actually a real camera. And the only way to find out how it feels and everything is just uh, go into a Leica store where you can find uh, like a TL2, uh, try it out and see for yourself. This is actually a very interesting camera. Where it fits in in the whole lineup, I don't know. Uh, I don't see a lot of people having an M10 and a Q and a TL2 and uh, a Leica SL. I met some people who said, yeah. This could be interesting as a backup to the SL because it takes the SL lenses and it has 24 megapixels and the quality is good and it's a very compact camera. Generally there's people who have the M10 or the Leica M and then they also like to have a compact camera like the Q. Now this is also a possibility and it takes the M lenses and it's just a lot of interesting possibilities and I don't think that you can really say who is going to be uh, uh, the target group of this camera. I think it's a little bit of a new target group for Leica. So one of the reasons I was interested in uh, the Leica TL2 and the Leica TL series was that when it came out in 2014 I looked at it briefly and I was like, nah, I have no need for this camera. But there was two things that made me really interested in this camera and one was that every time I talked to uh, the lens designer at Leica, Peter Carpe, who makes uh, magic lenses like the Noctilux here, we would talk about lenses and he would almost always just go around and say, yeah, uh, the Leica TL lenses are really good. And I have seen examples of uh, the TL lenses used in uh, studios where you can actually, uh, and that's even with the Leica T when it was even less megapixel, but you could actually zoom in on an eye and you could see every little detail. It's not that just the eye was sharp, but you could actually see every little detail. It was really uh, crazy details. So he's really proud of the Leica lenses, or the Leica TL lenses. And there's a few ones, there's like some zooms, and there's a 60mm macro, there's a 23mm, and, and I'm sure there's uh, more interesting lenses coming out. So that's one thing I said, okay, this is, if he's so uh, enthusiastic about this camera system, I should, uh, I should give it a chance. The other thing was that uh, the CEO of Leica in uh, January 2017, he gave an interview, and even 
Everybody knows that the Leica M system is the main system of Leica and it is about 60% of, uh, of the total income of Leica. Uh, the CEO of Leica said that the Leica TL is, if not the, then one of the most important systems of Leica in the future. And I wondered why, why does he say that? How, how come this is so important? Because remember, uh, by the end of 2016 and probably also beginning of 2017, a lot of people would think that Leica would face out the TL, that it was like a fiasco and they didn't sell anything and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but it did actually sell and it has been a successful system throughout the time. Even you could say that people like me that usually use the M system or anybody who wants a big chunky SLR camera, they don't understand why would you make a camera like this and why it's so different and all that. Uh, but it actually has been a success and is something that Leica really consider important. So that's one of the reasons I said, okay, I'm going to take on this camera and see how does it work, how can I get it to work, and, and I want to write some articles about it, some user reports, how uh, to make this camera work really well. When the Leica T came out in 2014, it came out with a whole new concept, whole design strategy. It was a, a, a lot of this history about it is just one piece of aluminium drilled out and, and all this stuff. And it also had like special uh, rubber straps and orange and yellow and other strong colors. And, and, and you kind of had to plug them into the camera in a very uh, specific way. So you couldn't really use normal camera straps, which was kind of annoying because the plastic strap was too short. Um, that's not the case anymore. Uh, the way it works with this system is there's a little hole here, so you have the same thing as you use for your Samsung or iPhone, and you just pull out this thing, and then this little thing with the ring, or actually just this little thing, allows you to put on any uh, camera straps. The one I have on here is uh, tie her up, a leather strap. Um, I also have one here I've used a little bit, and this is one that is actually made for uh, the Leica X. Uh, and this one actually have the right length and they come in yellow, orange, blue and what have you. Uh, nice strap. And then for a while I just, I just had to get, this is actually a Goyard uh, key ring strap. So uh, for the first while I just put this one on one side, I just had it uh, in one hand like this. Uh, that's not normally a way I want to carry a camera. I like that it's just hanging in a normal camera strap across so I don't have to have attention on it and it doesn't take up a hand. But, uh, but lots of possibilities to, to do this. And it comes with, so you have this little box with where these metal things come in and that's where I put the small black ones. So you put them back in here and then everything looks beautiful again. Uh, like there was no other stuff. It's kind of an uh, interesting little thing. And I tried it even the, with the big 50, 1.4, and, and it hasn't fallen off yet, so, so it seems like a, a workable system. So, uh, nice and flexible way to uh, put on straps. That was my talk on the Leica TL2. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you go to my website, you can read the article with a little bit more about this camera. Um, and also on my website, you can sign up for my mailing list, and when you do so, you get a free ebook. And of course you get uh, newsletters in the future with uh, articles about uh, lenses, cameras and light and everything. And also on my website I have uh, my new Leica TL and Leica TL2 quick start course. And that's a video course that you can buy and download if you want to have some advice on how to use this camera specifically and on photography in general. Thanks for watching and see you next time.